Round like a circle in a spiral, like a wheel within a wheel, never ending or beginning, like the circles that you find in the windmills of your mind. Visit stogiegeeks.com forward slash debonair for a list of retailers who carry debonair cigars. Buy some today and get a little more debonair. Thank you. Welcome back, everyone, to the Stogie Geek Show. Uh, we're here with the uh, regular cast and crew, myself and Will Cooper, as well as Stace and Joe. Stace is on lines via North Carolina via Skype. Uh, and Joe is here in studio. And I, we, I, I, it's interesting here in the studio, we're lighting up some more cigars and drinking some spirits. Uh, there was like, like three or four bottles that had like one pour left in them. Uh, probably from the holidays. So we're doing a little house cle- keeping. House yeah. housekeeping. Uh, <laughs> this is Green Spot Single Pot Still Irish Whiskey. It is hands down my most favorite Irish whiskey. We were talking before about Stogie Santa, uh, who's Mark Feely from Mr. J's Who Wanna Smoke. You're like, who's Sto-? Joe's like, who's Stogie Santa? I'm like, Mark. He's like, oh, Mark. Of course, I know Mark. This was Mark's recommendation. I want to say it's $40. A bottle, mm-hmm. one of the. I mean, you can't go wrong sure. with this. It is fantastic. So I just poured uh, Joe some of that. I'll probably finish off my Knob Creek. Well, there's not a lot left in there. Uh, limited edition 2001 bourbon. Uh, we'll finish that off as well. So pairings are important, especially here on the Stoey Geek Show. Absolutely. I've also lit, lit up my Don Carlos Personal Reserve Robusto, uh, which is one of my favorite uh, Fuente releases as well. Uh, I think it's a good medium-bodied cigar, uh, and they always smoke just fantastic for me. Tons of flavor. Um, if you can find these, pick up a box. These are awesome. They are great. I like that better than the Ida Shark. I, I agree. agree. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I agree. And and they come in a nice dark black box with a white glove, right? It's, it's a nice touch on it. Yep. Absolutely. All right. So, Will, you were very excited about this segment, and you were uh, teasing people on social media about this segment. And I was reading that post. And it's funny, before the show, we were kind of reading about, like, what, 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 was Will, what were we doing for this segment? And so we have some other thoughts as well. But I, I think it's very well put uh, how you structured this segment. So take it away, Will. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, so here's the deal. We, Donald Trump's becoming president. He's, he's going to be taking the oath in, like, 18, 19 days, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, look, there's questions about where the cigar industry is heading right now, okay? And we don't know yet. And, and uh, But I don't think it's going to be a silver bullet. But let's kind of put an imaginary scenario out there that the cigar industry can send one person, okay, and whoever that person is, they will get a 30-minute meeting with Donald Trump <laughs> where he will basically let them make the case for why we should not be regulated. And my question is, you, could, you're, you, are, you have the power to pick who that one person is. Who now, is that one person? Will, before we pick our one person, I'm gonna, I'll give you a little background from some research that I did for our uh, computer security show, Security Weekly. Okay. Um, meetings did take place with President-elect Trump uh, a few weeks ago, uh, and President-elect Trump met with, and some of you might have seen this news uh, that was released, uh, he met with uh, like Jeff Bezos from Amazon. Um, a bunch of other technology companies. It might have been the Uber person. There was a very select list, probably uh, eight or nine different CEOs from very large uh, technology companies. Apple might have been in there. I think Microsoft was in there. Twitter was not in there, which was a lot of articles written about how he, Trump used Twitter and then excluded the Twitter CEO and that yeah. it was on purpose or whatnot. And they were like, well, there's only so many seats at the table. Come on, people. Let's not focus on the drama. Like, you know, save the drama for your mama. Trump, <laughs> right. met, Trump met with technology leaders in the United States because one of his pledged missions is that he wants to bring jobs and technology back to the U.S. And, right. and I, I think that's, you know, I personally, I've always felt that that's something this country needs to do. I am frustrated that in elementary school, for example, we've talked about this in our security show, that... Um, 
they're not, uh, students are not taught computer programming and engineering in the elementary school level, largely because there's not enough talent to teach that. I'd love to see that problem addressed so that we can be engineering leaders uh, again. When I talk to students who, they have the aptitude, they have the knowledge, and a lot of them have the interest. And when I start teaching them computer programming, they're like, oh my God, this is so awesome. I'd love to see that taught in the schools, mm. right? So the point being, Trump has met with a lot of different people and he has had meetings with uh, technology leaders. Now we look at how oh, the cigar industry plays into this. It would be interesting to have a meeting about tobacco, right? Yep. Because there is so much FUD about the health issues with tobacco, about the tobacco industry in general, and what that means to this country, what that means to the economy, uh, and what that means for regulation is really, is really what we're talking about. So I think it's a very uh, important conversation for us to have here on the show, Will, to talk about how this could be treated, how this should be treated in terms of moving forward as, as a country as we address this one specific issue of tobacco. Right. And, and keep in mind, it is a hypothetical meeting, it, yeah. uh, you know, but we don't know yet what's going to happen. I think there'll, I think there'll be some communications at the executive level on this, but I don't think it will be. I don't think it's going to be like what you subscribe. I don't think it's I think it's going to be with with probably his Department of Health and Human Services. It will go through that route. I, it will be, yeah. And then let's you know face facts here. Uh, the technology companies here in this country are multi-billion dollar, several multi-billion dollar companies that right. have power and direction over technology in this country like no other set of people. I mean, when you talk about the CEOs of, you know, Microsoft, Apple, and Google, and, um, and others, there's a lot of influence that they have. Now, the cigar industry is much smaller. Uh, that's not to take away what we've accomplished as an industry, what we do as an industry, uh, how the health effects have been largely inflated by the media and just the like FUD that's out there about uh, the tobacco in general. Um, having said that, though, if I if I I'll, I'll go first, I guess. If my, in, when you posted this, will like I had one person in mind that I thought would be the right person to meet with uh, President Trump or whoever Trump would appoint to meet with the cigar industry in reality. I mean, let's face facts, right? It would probably, like you said, Will, someone who he'd appoint for the Department of Health or whatnot, uh, likely a, a, a panel of people that right. would address this issue. My pick, and I was reading through the comments, waiting till I got to someone, you know, the first person, like third or fourth comment in when you posted on social media, I was like, yeah, I agree with that person. For my pick, it would be Rocky Patel. Not just because they're a sponsor, but because I've spoken with Rocky Patel because of his history in both this industry and in just his background and being able to talk with people. When you talk to Rocky, he is just very engaging at a lot of different levels. And I think his skills and knowledge, not just in tobacco, but interacting with people and his background as an attorney and just everything combined of Rocky's skill set, I think he's the perfect person to meet with Trump or whoever Trump appoints. Yeah, actually, Jesse Wilburn made that comment. Um, interesting. So he would, when I get to mine, I'll explain why he wasn't on my list. But, but I agree for all the reasons you said. But there was a reason why I didn't pick him. But well, yeah, yeah and, and politically correct, right? Like, Rocky's got a history. He was an attorney for Hollywood, correct? Right, right. He understands that that Hollywood aspect, which I think is part of what is all about politics, right? Like, there's a certain kind of Hollywood-esque attitude that is involved with politics, you yeah. know, if you will. I mean, not to downplay it, but there is, right? Like, everyone... I think in Hollywood has their own agenda to promote their own personal brands and their own personal agenda. Politics is very much the same thing. I think Rocky understands that and can play into that very, very well. I also think Rocky understands all of the issues that we face as tobacco. He's very much a businessman, very successful uh, businessman, very successful uh, cigar company certainly one of the larger cigar companies in our industry, and he understands all of that at a different level. Not to mention, he has a background in being an attorney, which I think that experience also helps him in playing some of those politics and understanding all those finite details, the laws, and all of those things. I think, for me, that was why he, he earned my pick. It's a, fair, it's a fair pick. It's a fair pick. Hmm. Okay. Joe, Stace, do you have thoughts on this? Uh, thoughts on Rocky Patel or thoughts on who it should be? 
Thoughts on Rocky Patel first. That's sure. right. yeah, for the reasons why you picked, I could I could see to to delivery uh, for that in 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 there. But um, you know, it, it, I think to answer the question, it, it really needs to be uh, someone who <clears throat> is part of the boutique industry as well, because the the classic facings are not the ones that are quote That's true. unquote. That's a good point. The true. classic facings are not the one that are so much under attack. Some of them are grandfathered in. Uh, some of them are backed by larger money. Uh, so in the event that there was a taxation on any new blends, they could easily get it because because of the business structure. Mm -hmm. I think it has to be someone. Um, do you want me to give you my choice? Sure. Yeah. Let's go. Let's yeah. go. Or, or, or do, you, do you guys want to go first? I don't no. Wanna... Go ahead, Joe. I, I, I want to go last for a reason. But go okay. ahead. Go ahead. Yeah. yeah it says if I go last. If, yep. if I could guess right off the top of my head who has uh, uh, experience in the alcohol industry uh, before he went into uh, cigars and who has a gentle delivery, in my opinion, it would be Jose Blanco. Hmm. He was on my list, too. Was he really? That's a good point. You yeah. know, because, I, I mean, I met Jose Blanco a, a bunch of times and, and, and – uh, uh, I've ran into him, like, like, cause being in different cigar shops and whatnot, you know, and and I don't know his, his delivery of how, cause before his cigar resume, mm -hmm. he was involved with alcohol, uh, pre, uh, yep. president, yep. a very regulated yep. industry, re, re, yep. re, very regular. So yep. he knows mm -hmm. about regulation, he knows about that there too. But there's just something about his delivery mm. that I think, you know, Trump. Would, it would resonate. I, with I, I, yeah. I, I, I think it would resonate with 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 Trump because because Trump's done flashy. Yeah, let's face it, he's a flashy guy, mm -hmm. right? He's he's done flashy. He's done that. But but Jose Blanco has a delivery where he could sit next to the billionaire and he could sit next to the the blue collar worker in the same cigar shop and appeal to both. Yeah, and and just yeah. appeal no, to that's both. A good point. He's gentle. He delivers the product. He he's dabbing into the the boutiques, obviously, mm -hmm. with with his blends. And he, I mean, he went as far as as putting it into what his his wife's name, the boutique blends. And yeah, he, he's got the, and, the and Freya that, with, yeah, with, and, with and, Emma, and, and that's all in his wife's gig uh, there. And he's got the his, but he's got the history with the big brands but, as well. But he's got the history with the big brands, and then he just signed up with the big brand, right? But, you know, yeah, so, I would call I would so, call uh, so, EPC is kind of transitioned for well. I think bigger boutique. It's a bigger boutique. Uh, yeah, right, right. It's a it's bigger a big, boutique. But, yeah, but, but yeah. I think it definitely, my opinion, has to be a boutique because the argument is at the boutique level. All, all the boutique cigars are really under attack. And what the reason why we have all these great creative new cigars to, to talk about week after week is because the you know the barrier to entry is lower mm. and and, yes. and some no, of the blends good. that come out are, are great and, and and I think that that's the new face of the industry right now as to where it's coming. We all like Apa Jones, we all like the Alto Fuentes, we all like the the Romeo and Juliet is for sure. I mean you know the great great smokes and they all have their place. But all these new boutiques it, the boutique's voice definitely need Needs to be heard, and I think Jose Blanco, uh, he's just he's just gentle. Have have, have you ever met him? Have you ever had several him to, times? Yeah, he's yeah. just yeah, he's so, times, yeah. He, he's yeah. like you know he's just he's so like his delivery is perfect. You know what I mean? Like I don't know. What do you guys think? I, I love the actually I, I do I he was on my list mm -hmm. as the, one of the finalists. I like him. I do like him. He, and, and you nailed it with delivery. Yep. You know I can see him going. You know Donald. Let me explain something. This is all natural, you know, but I, but it's that, and I'm making fun of him a little bit, but I'm not because he's got this way of delivering that message to the, like, he doesn't talk at a, you know, he doesn't talk like a rocket scientist, but at the same time, he's very knowledgeable. He yes. puts it at a level that anyone can understand. And not for nothing, he's very passionate about what he mm -hmm. does. He's he, he so, is. He yeah, is. Like his passion, when he was describing his blends and, and, and the opportunity to create the blends, he delivers his passion mm. with, with the product. You know? And, yeah. you know, what do you guys think? Yeah, Stace, who yeah, wants go to it. go last? So let's hear from Stace. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, first of all, I, I, I wholeheartedly agree with you, Paul. Um, your pick, Rocky, is, is rock solid. And, and let's be honest, right? Rocky's been in Washington. He's been fighting for years. He's, right. been tied in, he's been tied in with CAA. He's been tied in with IPCPR. He's been working with Craig Cass, Ed, Abe DeBabno, those other guys. So Rocky's been in Washington a number of times. You know what's That's funny, what Rocky, Stace? Uh, Jason from the chat says, send Rocky Patel. 
He says, LOL, I bet he and Trump would get along. And, like, I, you know, I hey, think well, there's some humor uh, in that, but I think there's truth to that as well, right? For absolutely. whatever reason, there's truth to that, right? Absolutely. And, and, and Joe, you hit uh, one, one of my talking points, which is I wholeheartedly agree, right? In Washington, it, it's fighting for the cigar industry, but in my mind, I feel like it's big tobacco that's getting the recognition, right? For sure. It's, it's, it's big tobacco at the U.S. level. And so I feel like we do need the smaller guys visible. So Jose is is a rock solid choice there. I have a couple others that I would throw in with Jose. Um, and my answer, Will doesn't like it, or maybe maybe you're okay with it, but my answer isn't one person. My answer okay. is really sending a, a small conglomeration of people who I don't believe have been in Washington yet. Right? We've already had. Uh, like I said, IPCPR, CAA, they're lobbying all the time, right? They've got PACs that they're up there. They reach out. They get the Jorge Padrones. They get the Rocky Patels. They get the big guys from El Tadas and Davidoff to go in and talk. So those guys are already part of a core group. But we need these smaller guys, right? I, I want I want Rafael Nadal on that in the list. Uh, he is a fantastic uh, spokesman, and he's rock solid. I want Skip Martin on there because Skip is very well educated. Skip, Skip understands uh, from a business perspective, but he also— also understands from a guy who took it from grassroots and he hasn't quite gotten to the top of the, the mountain yet, but he's on his way. I want Frank Herrera on this list as well. We um, had someone say Frank Herrera too. So, so Frank Herrera, yeah. Skip Martin, uh, Rafael Nadal. Uh, I want to put Steve Saka on there. I think he was on the list. Steve is a very passionate. Yep. He knows the tobacco industry. So I want to add those guys on top of with Rocky and Jorge Padron and the Fuente family who are already engaged there. And then to your point earlier, Paul, you said something about, or one of you, maybe you or Joe said something about Hollywood. I want to get some meat and potatoes from Hollywood. Let's put Arnold Schwarzenegger yeah. on the list and let's put Michael Jordan on the list. Two, mm -hmm. huge, adv two huge advocates of the cigar industry, two mega billionaire icons who who can help you know solidify our cause so my answer is keep what you're doing but add those other four boutique guys and send schwarzenegger and michael jordan with them you know stace what i love about what you just said was uh draws parallels to computer security and there's been a lot of uh historic and there's been a lot of kind of fly under the radar appearances by people from computer security who have testified in front of Congress and worked as lobbyists. And there are people from a lot of different backgrounds that have worked together to present that information. And one of the most historic times in computer security, for example, where people have gone and testified in front of Congress was the Loft Group in the late 90s went in front of Congress and said, yes, it is possible to take the entire internet down. And there was a whole panel of people and they were people in our industry who were just doing research in kind of the same respect that there are small boutique guys like Skip Martin and Steve Saka who understand the issues, are very well educated about our industry, and very articulate about the issues and can communicate with people. And, and finding that balance is, is somewhat unique. And for that reason, Stace, I really like your picks of the Skip Martin and the Steve Saka because it kind of, they remind me of people in computer security who I'm like, ah, I don't know, like would they ever testify in front of Congress? But when they do, it had a really big impact because of their background and because of the things they said when they testified in front of Congress, as, as an example. So for that reason, Stace, I really like uh, those two particular picks uh, from you. Sweet. But yep. can we only send one? According to the exercise, or well, that was yeah, that was technical. <laughs> I, Will, Will Will knows me. We we've been friends for years. He knows me. I never I never color inside the lines. Yeah, so. exactly. Now there have Thanks been so. very popular people. So because we've. In computer security, we've done this for a long time, just as a natural progression, right? And in cigars, I feel like we're just starting on, on some of this journey and getting organized in the past couple of years. Um, very popular figures who you'd be like, yeah, they would be the ideal ones to testify in front of Congress. They've gotten nowhere, too. So, like, your, your right. pick could go either way is my uh, kind of, from my experience, that's kind of like my advice, like, your pick could go either way. Mm -hmm. There is like Bruce Schneier who literally wrote the book on cryptography, um, went in front of Congress and said, for all of your IOT devices, like all these internet connected things, lobbied in Congress and said, you, you really need to fix this problem. We need regulation. It, this was a case for 
arguing for regulation, arguing for a government body to regulate these devices so that we can all be secure. It's like the complete opposite argument, right? And Bruce Schneier is the perfect person. He's one of the smartest people in our industry, the most insightful, probably the top five most insightful people in computer security. And Congress like basically laughed him off the state. And that's no knock on Bruce, but they basically laughed him out of out of Congress and said, "You're never, especially with the incoming administration, you're never going to get that." Well, which is disheartening for me. In Will, kind of to your point of this segment, like your pick, like you really hope that person, whoever it is, is able to make inroads into uh, this particular issue. Now, the shining light that we have in cigars is that we're arguing not for regulation. In other instances, in other industries. We're arguing for regulation because it's really the only answer. But in this right. case, when we're talking about cigars and the FDA and all of the misinformation that's available today, the argument is very clearly for us in the industry and a lot of people who understand all of these issues, the argument is for not, is not regulate. And I think the person who can communicate that the most effectively to Congress is the person we need to send. Yeah, uh, which, which to your testament, I think Jose Blanco... Will deliver it. Yes, will deliver I, it. it Rocky Patel. He, he, yeah, he, I, he's I, not. He, you know, if if I were to deliver it, it'd be like, listen, pal, this is how it yeah. should be. You know what I mean? Right. But he he has a delivery to him that you just you you warm up to him. Right. You know right. what I mean? Yeah, and, and, and that's important, I think, to break down the barriers. Whoever. You know, yeah. I, I definitely. I don't know. I don't know. So, Will, I, this, is, uh, this is great. I'm really glad you uh, put this segment together. Mm. We're all waiting. Uh, we're on the edge of our seats now to hear your thoughts and opinions. And I'm going to sit up straight for this. We'll sit we up straight. Well, we're ready for it, Will. We're ready for it. I'm ready. It. Back hurts. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So, I agree with a lot of the points you made. Um, the bottom line is anyone who's on the IPCPR board, the CRA board, and the CAA board needs to stay home. Mm. The starters, zero wins. I love you. I love all you guys on the board. I appreciate all all the hard work you've done, but you have no wins. And I got to put Rocky in that category. I love Rocky Patel, sponsor the show, but something, someone different needs to be there. Now, Stace brought up one name that was. I had Jose Blanco on there. I had Rafael on there as a finalist. Uh, the other name, I, the other name who was a finalist was Dr. Cuenca. From Hoya to Nicaragua. Yep. Yep. He's very articulate, but he's not U.S. citizen. Right. So mm-hmm. ultimately, I wanted a businessman in there. I wanted someone who understood everything from the production to farming to distribution. I wanted someone who understands what regulation and taxation has done to the business and how you can grow a business. And the name that kind of comes to me, and it's not going to be a popular or sexy choice, is Nick Perdomo. Hmm. Nick Perdomo... Absorbed, what did he do? He went and absorbed the S chip tax. And what did he do? He grew his business. That's true. Nick, ha- I don't think, I think Nick's got the political savvy to go in there and, and basically have a competent conversation with Donald Trump and, and make this case. I think he can articulate the impacts of this business. And I think he's in that middle category. He's not big tobacco and he's not uber boutique either. Right. But I think he could talk through both angles of that. So. Again, new, new, new face, kind of someone new. To, I, I know Nick's been in Washington. I don't want to say he's not been in Washington, but he, I don't want to say he's been, you know, at the forefront like some of the other people have been either. So that's that. And Steve Sacco was on my list also. He was also a finalist. So that that's who I'm going with right now. But most importantly, we need we need a new face there to do this. So Nick Perdomo makes uh, – uh, I, I feel embarrassed, right? He should have been on my list, and he wasn't. But for the same reasons that you were talking about Nick Perdomo, that's why I brought Rafael Nadal in here. He's got legitimacy. He's been on CA's top 25. He's got recognition there. Um, he – he has got, you know, he understands the the, the farming. He understands the the, the, uh, the bringing it to market. Uh, he has all that as well. So I, that's why he was on my list. I'm I'm shocked that I did not look at Perdomo. So that's a great great selection. No, I was close with Raphael. I, I really was, but but I thought Nick had more of the uh, experience at all the avenues of the business. Like I don't know Rocky Patel. I mean, I'm sorry, uh, Nick Raphael. Raphael Nadal. I didn't. Nick understands the farming pieces, so he could talk through the the overseas job impacts of what's going on, I think, very strongly. You know, hey, these jobs are going to go away in Nicaragua, too. And he, Oh, by the mm-hmm. way, here's the impacts of that. 
the Skip global Martin, impacts. Sorry. Right. Yeah. Skip mm-hmm. Martin. I mean, all the names you guys mentioned can do some of that. And Rocky Patel, my only reason for not picking him is I just wanted a new face in front of a new president. Right. Um, and uh, Jose, I thought Jose, too. I was going back. I mean, these are, everyone named names that I was thinking of. The only other one I had was Dr. Cuenca. But, yeah, I went uh, with with that. You know, there was a couple of other interesting ones on there on the list here. Someone had Marvin Shankin. Oh, right. Marvin, yeah. Marvin's, uh, to your point, Joe, very engaging like Jose Blanco. Yep. Yeah. 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 Very and personal, I, I, very engaging. I think someone else mentioned Mike Herklotz. Very engaging, but I think he's a, yes. that's a good. That's a good. That was a that's really a good, pick. good pick. I think that's a good pick. That was that was Peter uh, Peter J from uh, from the chat who I've met before. Peter's a great guy. Hey Pete, um, that's a great pick as well. Very engaging, uh, engaging people, captivating. Yes, if if he stayed where 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 he was, who uh, uh, Marvin Marvin? You know yes, I mean? if he yes. stayed where he was, if he stayed where he was and did his thing, and and then now that you know they've done their buyout. Sell out, buy out, whatever. What? Yeah. So what did you know, happen? To, what did happen? Where is Marvin today? National is with uh, is is with Drew. But Marvin's no longer with Drew Estate. Is that correct? No, he's taking Marvin Samuel. This is oh, Marvin okay. Shankin. Marvin Shankin. Which this is, is uh, cigar, cigar aficionado. aficionado. Two different yeah. Marvins. Two different Marvins. Okay, my yeah. bad. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, I was thinking of Drew Estate Marvin. Uh, so was I. That's who why. I who I've seen and met in, in yeah, person. So yeah, I thought was very engaging. Uh, which, which, which I thought you he is engaging as dead. But yes. you know, if, if we were talking about Drew Estate Marvin, he made a decision to be on that bigger side of the fence. There. I see. Okay. And and, and, yeah. and I really think that where my argument comes from, um, great great choices there. By the way, guys, but uh, it has to be from the boutique new face. Has to be that good because because that's the crux of of uh, what the argument now, is. Now my open question uh, for the panel for all of our listeners, uh, probably a question for Glenn Loop from CRA is: We've been reading a lot about what uh, President-elect Trump is going to do once he gets in office, and one of the things that we're reading about is the two hundred some odd regulations. Two hundred thirty-two. Two hundred thirty-two. Thank you, <laughs> Joe. That. Uh, President like Trump wants to basically get rid of, right? And I've read lots of articles because I follow this particular train of articles and, and happenings in the world uh, based on not just cigars, but computer security and, and other things that I'm personally invested in. And as I've stated before, like some regulations are actually good. In this case, for cigars, my personal belief, and I think we all share this belief, obviously, being in the cigar industry, is that regulation of cigars is is bad in a potential economic impact. And I've, I've talked about this with lots of different specialists on both sides of the fence and read lots of different articles on both sides of the fence. But when President-elect Trump becomes president in January 8, 18th or 19th? 20th. January 20th, right? What exactly can he do and what is this tied to? Because there are certain laws that have been enacted through Congress that would require another vote through Congress to change. There are executive orders that have been enacted that, with the swipe of a pen, President Trump Mm -hmm. can get rid of. And then there seems to be, in my estimation, I'm not a political expert, right? I'm an expert in security. I'm an expert in cigars. I'm not a political expert by any stretch of the imagination. But there are certain things that... Uh, kind of fall in this gray area, like what can the FDA do and how can that be changed? Can we get rid of cigars and make it an exemption without going through another vote through the House and the Senate and and getting congressional approval uh, and things like that? And those are the kind of questions. And I don't know, Will or Stace, I've talked about this with Joe before and we were were talking pre-show about this. So Will or Stace, like, what is your opinion? What have you been hearing about ex- exactly what could happen? What are the limits around presidential power that we have here in this country that would either limit or grant permission for the president to do as it affects the cigar industry? So, uh, okay. So here's what I'll, and then this is, I don't want to sound too negative. There's 232 of those regulations. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. If cigars are in the top 200, I'd be very surprised. Right. So I, yep, I think yep. it's going to be a lower priority. I agree. Um, that, so my, my gut tells me 
we're not going to see anything from it. And the reason why I think the reason I think what's happening is we're we're seeing the glass half full. And I think it's great we see the glass half full. But there's this other faction of um, the anti-tobacco people who are all over this right now, yeah. and that we're probably not seeing. And they're going to be all over Trump from a health issue thing. So that's why I think it's going to be tough. Now he can do some things. Like, for example, when it comes to certain funding and executing a certain programs, he can roll certain things back, you mm-hmm. know, so he could delay the they can delay the implementation. He can't undo the regulations. He can't undo. That, yeah. So uh, when he can't correct me if I'm wrong, Obama, when during one of his first or second administration, there was the Tobacco Act that was passed. Through right. Congress, he right. Trump can't take office on January twentieth. Did yep. you say? And just yep. be like, you know what? That's not a law anymore. Like that's not how it works in this country. Well, that's not. That's as, not happening. Right. It's it's the same as Obamacare. Right. Yeah. So he Obamacare, can't just come in. Right. Right. Exactly. Right. So so that's where I'm kind of going with it. He can't now. There are some things he can do to kind of, like I said, possibly delay the implementation. Right. I honestly, you know, obviously we've talked. There's a lawsuit, and then there's this legislation piece, which. I got to be honest, and I'm probably going to get killed by Glenn Luke for saying this. I think we may need to put our energies elsewhere. This legislative route is just proving to be nothing more than it's too complicated, it's too costly, and we're getting nowhere. Yeah, and spending for, a lot of money. We're spending very a lot little, of money, very, on, little, uh, very little in return. Yeah. For example, we're trying to tie this to appropriations, and, and there's so when you tie it to appropriations, I'm not saying it's a bad thing, but there's so many. It's a web. I mean, right. there's yeah. all these other yeah. things that are in there that. This is where cigars get bumped down, and and I just say, why, you know, is this where I want to spend my resources? I'd almost rather put more resources on lobbying with the executive office and and obviously the lawsuit than this legislative route, which I think's gone nowhere. Yeah, right now. And my, my comment there is is number one, we're going to be regulated, right? We are. My, my wife works part time at a bakery. Okay, she has to submit, not her, but the company that she works for. They have to submit recipes for cooking cookies and bread, okay? Mm-hmm. If, if they're regulating that, we're going to be regulated with cigars. So so that, that boat is sailed, right? So we're going to be regulated. What's going to happen is costs are going to go up. The question is how many players in the market today are going to be able to continue to pay to play? Mm-hmm. And, and that that's really what it gets at for me. So I want to spend money at uh, not undoing regulation, but Reducing the change. barrier to entry is what we're talking exactly. about. Exactly. If you want to change the predicate date, fine. Let's see if we can get it off of 07. Yeah. Move it to August of 2016 when the law went into effect. Let's 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 do that. And then everybody who had stuff on the shelf, okay, you, you've already got that. And then everything moving forward, you need to – you know, pay to play, and and that's where I think. So we're it gonna sounds go. like, then without an expert, it. but it sounds like without an expert commenting here on the show uh, that knows for certain that there are changes that we could make to the laws that have been passed without requiring congressional approval. We can kind of steer and change things to help the cigar industry, but we're not going to be able to undo regulation entirely. Right. Well, here's here's the point. So Stace made a great point here. We're not going to undo the regulations, but there's, you know, when Glenn Loop was on the show, Paul, he talked about all the, the Small Business Administration doing the economic impact studies. And basically, based on what the FDA is laying out, what this is going to cost and the impacts, that's where I think you can look at some of those things and say, do we really, if we charge X dollars to, to get a product approved, it's going to cripple this business. Maybe we don't charge X dollars. Maybe we look at something that's a little more cost yeah. cost. Enabling, you know, right. Dr. Cuenca talked about that yep. when we interviewed mm-hmm. him. How, how in other countries, he's like Dr. Cuenca was the head of Hoya de Nicaragua. He said regulation doesn't scare him. He's fine with dealing with regul- a regul- regulated uh, industry. The problem is it, what they're doing. It's cost prohibitive in, in the U.S. Yes, and that's where the big problem is. But so those are the things I think we really should be focusing a lot of our energies on right now. Um, at yep. least that I, I would think would be the best thing. No, I, I completely agree. And, th- and that's similar to other regulation that I've seen in different industries. And it seems to me like, I, I don't know, I feel like there's a lot of, uh, uh, some people are like doom and gloom about FDA regulations in cigars, but it's minimizing the impact. And whether people look at tobacco favorably or not, 
the economic component is separate. Like they, right. there are people in Congress, especially in Florida, as we were talking about before, where there's a flourishing industry that revolves around tobacco. Mm-hmm. They are fighting for, it's almost like they're not really fighting for tobacco rights, but they're fighting for rights of a free market, reducing barriers to entry. Yes, there will be some regulation, but businesses will be able to flourish. It's the same right. thing with any regulate. We want regulation in security for these Internet of Things devices, but we don't want to stifle innovation. And right. everyone I've talked to in, whether it's a medical device in that industry, whether it's a, a technology device, whether it's tobacco, a, a lot of people that, uh, regardless of where they fall on these other issues, they're pro capitalism and being able to have a free market and a flourishing business. And if we can get those people to rally, they can help protect our industry who, which will be regulated as we were saying, we're in regulation is inevitable, but being able to still have a flourishing industry that, yeah, maybe does have a barrier, but it, how high is that, that barrier to entry? Right. And I think that's what yeah. we're talking about. And certainly in Florida, I think they're pushing for it from an economic perspective. And that, like you, I think what you're saying, Will, is that's probably the right approach rather than trying to, like, wipe everything out and it, having us fly into the radar. Well, you know, Paul, there's, there's one other name I want to throw out, and, and he emailed it to me, and I think it's a really good name, and it's Victor Vitale. Mm-hmm. And, and, and here's the only reason why I want to mention it, because Vic, Victor understands everything, but Victor's also connected on the vape end of things, too. Right. And he can actually, it's a good choice because that's another big thing that this is all tied to. Yeah, all of our stuff is tied It's to tied that. to the vape thing. And if anyone can talk through both ends of the, of yes. the equation, it's Victor. So, and I think that's, you know, how we, and that's a lot of, don't forget what's happening here. It's a one-size-fits-all policy that they're trying to put on us here. Yeah, so, and that's obviously not the right approach. Yeah, yeah, and that's. So, you know, some of the things, for example, some of the testing they're talking about, this chemical testing, you know, it's costly because, again, the vape piece has chemicals in it. You know, we're saying, hey, it's natural tobacco, water. It's a little different. But there is some rationale. That rationale is as crazy as we may seem for us in the scar industry. The vape industry is coming at it very differently. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, because vaping is a a more chemical process than... Right, right. So that's yeah. kind of... The process, I, like uh, I think education and certainly some of the things we've been doing as a cigar industry in the past couple right. of years is separating that from the chemical process that does involve vaping because it's not a... Vaping is totally different. I mean, I've right. been involved in the vaping industry and I've you know, tried to understand it. I've done a lot of vaping myself and we've interviewed people in the industry as well, Victor included. Uh, it's just, it's completely different. And I think separating that is certainly important. Uh, and getting people on the stage in front of Congress, in front of the Trump administration to explain right. those differences does nothing but help both industries as well. Right. I mean, right. Uh, let's face facts as, you know, people that we care about other human beings, obviously, we don't see, want to see anyone get hurt. Like, obviously, there needs to be some kind of standard as well. When I, right. for example, purchase vaping liquids, I want to make sure there's no other additives that can hurt. It's the same thing with cigars. I want to know that this is a natural product. Sure, that's right. like table stakes, right? But mm-hmm. the process of validation for the individual industry is totally different. Totally different. And the way that the media and the anti-tobacco, anti-vaping industry have portrayed it muddies the waters uh, in the same light as we've seen a lot of fake news and all this FUD that's happened mostly in, in the previous 2016, I think that needs to go out the window. We need to talk about what's fact, right, and get back to that. And we'll be in much better shape, both the vaping industry and the cigar industry, if we do that. Yep. But also from an economic perspective, wouldn't they, let's say we go to the 2016, August 8th, 2016, on the shelf, anything on the shelf, August 8th, 2016, is, 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 is free to go. And now we're going to create this new barrier to entry. Wouldn't any new cigar company, just Economics 101, they would just pass that price on to the consumer? And, or? And, 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 and I've heard, you know, 250000 300000 If you do the math on any basic cigar company that, that gets started out and does that, we're talking 70 cents more to or the consumer. Or just focus on what you've released before that date. 
Sure, but 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 is but what happens if if we we begin the podcast with with the innovative stuff that happens every year? No, that's true. You know what yeah, I mean? No, so, no, you're so right. You take yeah, the Inyeho, yeah. So when the Inyeho comes out, or of Quesada Oktoberfest, or anything that we talked about out, Candela and yeah, all the yeah, things. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, and, yeah. And right. So, so which which is what keeps from a marketing perspective? It, it's what keeps it's what keeps us us consumers riveted. I mean, uh, uh, that's why a podcast like this exists. You know what's what I mean? frustrating? So, though, what's frustrating is those of us us in the know, we understand that from a cigar perspective and a tobacco perspective, there's virtually no difference between those blends. Like they're they're even though they're changing the blend, the process is the same. Well, it's so it, why it's have a that predicate? Process. Day? It's a natural process. It's a you're still working with a plant. You're still working with tobacco. There's no, in my opinion, from everything I've read. And most of us will agree. There's no significant changes in uh, health uh, effects sure. from tobacco that was produced before August 2016, but and that's, tobacco but, was produced afterwards. But getting right. back to the specific exercise, it's the delivery. We're being the premium right. cigar industry is being lumped in with with, right. with vape and with other products and from the Food and Drug Administration. It, we've talked about this on the show in the past, Joe, and you, you may not have heard some of our previous discussions with experts in the vape industry as well as ourselves. Like, you got the person who creates a vape store mm -hmm. and is mixing vape liquids in the back room right. with who knows what standards. And then the opposite end of that spectrum is uh, Craft Vapory, who's a good friend of ours, in California, who is sourcing vape liquids from people who are following these insane procedures for creating these liquids in a very natural process, mm -hmm. and you've got this huge spectrum, right? But, but I feel like in cigars, we don't have that variance in the spectrum of how we're producing cigars, right? Right. You right, know what right. I mean? But here's the problem. The problem is we're being lumped in with We're lumped in X, with X, yes. it. And, and, and when, yep. it, when it goes to a floor in Congress, you know, they're passing all these laws and right. doing this stuff. It's just being lumped in. And, and, and it's, it's terrible. I mean, being a somewhat educated consumer and experiencing these different like i've had the vape liquids from the people that are making their own in the back room and i'm like that tastes terrible like, yeah, but uh, you can tell it's a consumer <coughs> and you're like hold on red flag yeah, <laughs> like but, red yeah, flag but, like that's but bad how many times has that happened on a cigar floor in a factory when someone's tried tried something and they're like oh we're never gonna do this play yeah, again no yeah. you don't think so no, no? I, uh, I don't know it's i mean it, it, it's tough it, it, but if this new barrier to entry comes like the 2016 a, a exemption that we were talking about i mean they're just gonna pass it on to the consumer so cigars, they already are so, so, they already are yeah so, are. so 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 cigar so cigar prices are going up Maybe they're putting into a kitty to 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 prepare for the incoming storm that that, that that's gonna happen. Mm -hmm. and it's you know it's pretty unfortunate, but I mean realistically speaking, how much are we talking more per stick? I mean, is it a dollar a stick more? Is it is it two dollars a stick more? Well, for that's the, regulation? the question. You know what I mean? Right. Like, you know, and then you get someone like like Perdomo, who like you said, he he. He ate the S chip tax from his marketing perspective, and then launched a product to 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 do that. I mean, not every boutique cigar is going to be able to withstand well, in, that blow. Well, in, into Crux comment, right? We're not talking about all vape in a umbrella, mm -hmm. right? Like that, right, like right. I said, there are there are vape products that, uh, and you can tell as a consumer. And um, we were, uh, full disclosure, through Security Weekly, right, we were uh, reselling some vape stuff and doing a lot in, in, in vape. It seems to me the vape industry has kind of fallen off in popularity, so we don't do so much with it uh, anymore. But um, I had the uh, luxury of trying all different kinds of vape liquids. And I, as a consumer, like, you can tell, like... Not all vape is made the same, dude. Like it's there's total there's difference. Sure. Like you, some stuff just tastes like really, really synthetic, and other stuff does uh, taste very much natural. And uh, and Will, you mentioned Victor, um, and I've sampled most of Victor's vape liquids. 
I, absolutely in the natural category. Like they right. are very, very clean tasting, awesome, awesome products. As a consumer, you can definitely uh, know the difference. So, yep. And I think to your point, Joe, too, in cigars, we know the difference, too. I mean, there's a huge difference between what you can go buy in a convenience store versus what you can buy in a premium cigar shop, right? Mm-hmm. Like we know the difference. So there are differences in both, in both industries as well. One of the big issues I see in the vaping community, though, is um, it's like the backdoor thing, right? The the vaping devices, it, it's it's almost like open source code, right? Yes. So people people are going out and they're they're basically tricking out these devices where they're dropping the ohms to increase the 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 the, the density of the smoke, and they're you know it's not what the vaping manufacturer expected it to be, right? So these people are going out and tricking the things out, making them stronger, denser, more smoke. And, you know, you're seeing things explode and all that stuff. So I think that's a real negative thing that's hitting the vaping community that should not even cast a shadow in our industry because it's it's two totally different animals. Well, and yeah, to speak to that, um, Stace, and the reason why it comes into our uh, or my industry and security is because, like, you're hacking those devices, right? And that's yep. largely why yep. it comes on my radar, right? And it's really just science, right? And who knows what the, the health effects are of, of doing that. Um, right. But it's really... I mean, it's science, dude, right? Like it's like you said, it's adjusting the ohms, adjusting the devices. Um, I think personally it's going to level out. I think you're gonna, still going to see – my hope is that you see the vape industry level out and gain in popularity and continue to grow. Everything that I've read says that it's a much, much safer alternative to cigarettes, which we haven't talked about as the other kind of, uh, you know, elf in the room in the tobacco industry. Right. It's a right. much safer alternative. But the anti-tobacco lobby, the studies they publish about vape are, like, even more fud than what they're publishing about cigars, mm. which is just it's staggering to me. It's staggering, like, shocking yep. to me. Yep. Oh, yeah. Well, well, maybe with proper regulation, we won't be lumped in. That's true. That's not it, full, right? <laughs> well, and I, and I think it should be separate. Uh, and I think it definitely should, should be separate. If, if 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 they were going to, you know, reg- regulate vape and regulate cigars, totally two different arguments. Defining what safe standards are for each industry is completely different. Yep. And I think Agreed. there should be there should be uh, standards for both. And I think already. The majority of cigar manufacturers, 90 plus percent, are already practicing safe standards because it, it's similar to me in terms of software security, right? Like people who write software, they don't want to write crappy code. <laughs> and and right. in, in that process, like they're going to produce more secure code. It's the same thing with cigars. Cigar manufacturers don't want to produce crappy cigars. Majority of them, that <laughs> well, the cigars that we smoke, right? Cigar manufacturers that we talk to on this show and sponsor this show, they don't want to produce crappy cigars. In that process, it's a safe process for them uh, right. to produce those cigars. And I think that's a very uh, good analogy into where we fall with regulation, right? Yeah. Anyway, that's my closing thoughts on that. Yeah, my, 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 I got one closing thought, and I'm not going to Go drag ahead, it on. But no. Go ahead. Rudy, Giuli- Rudy Giuliani was not on anybody's list. Mm. Case closed. Yeah. I, I'm just saying it. The, the, savior, the guy who was anointed by the Savior, and I believe me, I've heard, if you listen to other shows, other podcasts, industry people, you know, manufacturers. Hey, you know what's you know, funny? I, I not saw— one person. I don't know what what triggered it, but I saw a picture when I was Googling of Bill Clinton smoking a cigar, right? Like, <laughs> there are obviously people who are, are into cigars, and it's debatable whether or not they're going to help the cause or not, right? I, I just, yeah, 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 that's a good point. You know, Bill Clinton, I think because he's Democrat, he's looked at as the enemy, unfortunately. But he does smoke cigars. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. That, that, that's why I didn't like, like any Hollywood People going in to the Trump analogy that we were trying to do. The yeah, because, uh, because people you know, have a polarizing. Yeah, yeah, sure. They they just you know you. But no matter who you send, they're either gonna like them or not like them. And, and but and what about Ted deliver. Cruz? People talk about Ted Cruz as an advocate for cigars. Uh, I think he's an advocate. I don't know if I've heard him advocate for cigars as much as anti-regulation. Okay. See, Giuliani didn't even. Giuliani put one of the biggest smoking bans in New York City in yeah. place. People 
forget right, that. Right. And, forget was, that. And, yep. and, the, and the industry begged him not to do that in, in, when he was in office. Yep. And, and, and so, you know, again, he and, he and he listened to Giuliani. He buckled under basically some anti-smoking stuff. I think he compromised. Well, it, so. I think that was political pressure. There was protocol. That's why I say these, you, yeah. you can't underestimate these anti-tobacco people, unfortunately. Yep. No, I, I agree. All righty. With that, we're going to take a short break. Come back. And we have a pre-recorded interview with the Padrones. You don't want to miss this one. I it's going to be awesome. Yeah. Stay tuned. <laughs> 